Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and today I'll be sharing with you all the seeds and the transplants that you can put in your garden right now in August. But before we get started, I wanted to give you a few updates. If you haven't yet already signed up for our newsletter, make sure you do so. I'll put the link in the description below. This is a way that I can keep in touch with you, send you garden tips monthly, share with you all the events and workshops that we have going on right here at my farm and garden. YouTube has been a little funny lately. There's been a lot of glitches. There's been a lot of people notifying me saying they're not getting notifications when I do upload a video. So this is a way we can stay in touch and uh, keep all of our videos in one place. After I go over this list, I will be taking you into my garden, which is dying at this point. We're getting ready to pull everything up and prep our garden for fall. I'll also go over all the seeds that I am starting this month and putting into my garden so you can watch all season long and see how those are doing. So in zone nine, you can plant beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy or Chinese cabbage, collard greens, eggplant, kale, peppers, tomatoes, tropical spinach, celery, mustard, beans, carrots, cucumbers, onions, squash, turnips, and sunflowers. I will put all this information in the description below, so if I'm going too fast, you can definitely look there. In zone 9B, which is where I am here in Central Florida, we can plant beans, carrots, eggplants, okra, onions, your bunching onions, southern peas, peppers, squash, tomatoes, tropical spinaches, sunflowers, sugarcane, and pineapple. Now I'm gonna be going over all the seeds and seed packets that I'll be putting into my garden this August. First, I'm gonna start with these sunflowers. This is a new variety to my garden. Um, I planted some of these on Mother's Day a few months ago, and I absolutely love the variety so much that I've saved some seeds, and I will be adding this into my seed collection. If you're not sure how to purchase my seed collection or know what I have in stock, I will be flashing a picture here soon so you can order. Also, I'll be putting that in the description below. But this variety has been beautiful. It shoots off multiple sunflowers, whereas my mammoth sunflower that I absolutely love that grows 10, 12 feet high, these are more like a six to eight feet uh, variety and they're container friendly. So we'll be putting those into the garden and um, what I'm gonna be doing is staging them to where I'm planting a few every couple weeks. So then that will allow me to have sunflowers open through the garden all through the season. Also, I'm going to be planting asparagus beans. They're called yard beans. Some people call them different, um, but they're basically these long green beans and they're super fun to grow. I want to grow more of these versus um, some of our typical beans that we grow. We usually grow pole or bush and um, we'll be doing both the season, just more of the yard beans. I also will do my favorite pepper, which is sweet banana pepper and we're gonna mix in some uh, California Wonders. We're gonna do carrots, which are my children's absolute favorite thing to harvest. We usually do an entire row of these. We did the Scarlet Nanties last year and they were a success. We're also gonna do some Tender Sweet. I'm also gonna do some zucchini and squash. And I'm gonna try this uh, scallop squash again. They just are really interesting squash and I'd like to be able to be more successful with growing squash. I haven't been so successful, but this year I think I'm going to grow these in containers and I'm going to show you um, an early birthday present here that I bought myself that I'll be doing a unboxing in, an, in another video, but I'm going to show you that real briefly. Um, I'm also going to put some Everglades tomatoes in our garden. We do have some of these growing right now, which I'll show you. Um, they did so well through the summer that I definitely want to have these in the garden all the time. We're also going to be putting um, some zinnias and some marigolds into the garden along with our normal mammoth sunflowers. 
and I am waiting on a couple other variety tomatoes that I have some friends sending me and also my neighbor always gifts me her wonderful grape tomato. If you are wondering where you can get that cute hat I was wearing, it's Garden Hair Don't Care. I have my logo on the back, Southern Dirt Farm and Garden. They are $25. I will put the email you can send a message to if you want to check stock or if you want to order my seed collection. All that information will be in the description. I do have a website coming soon where you can easily order my seed collection and my products and sign up for events and workshops. All right guys, so now we're gonna head into the garden and show you how awful the garden is looking right now in the mid heat of the summer. We will be pulling a lot of this up um, here in the next few days or the next couple weeks. Um, it's been so hot and every day I come out here and I'm just so unmotivated to do anything. So if any of you guys are like me and feel completely unmotivated to get into your gardens, please comment below. Please share your struggles with gardening in the heat, uh, especially in Florida. All my weeds, as you can see, weeds are just going crazy. <clears throat> Even my kids will typically come out and help me pull weeds. I give them a few bucks and they're happy to do it, but not right now. So <laughs> um, we did just recently pull up our sweet potatoes. I will show you a quick video of that at the end. Um, of course, my sprinklers decided to come on right now in the middle of the video. As you can see, a lot of the kale is dying off. My zinnias are just sick as can be. They're dying. <laughs> They've got um, spots on them. They're just awful. Here's some of my kale plants that have just disintegrated. Um, I, I am going to try to preserve a couple of these kale plants, see if they will grow into trees. Um, I have done that with a couple of my other kale plants on the other side over there. Um, it seems like the ones that are in the shade are kind of surviving a little bit better than the ones in the straight up heat. So we'll probably be keeping those. Um, I have lost a couple of my collard plant, collard green plants. They are starting to just rot out in the middle. I'll see if I can preserve one of these. Um, my southern peas. I've never grown southern peas and I did want to give you an update on growing those for the summer. They have been a huge winner. The kids will just come out here and pull the peas out of the pod, eat them raw. They absolutely love them. Um, I've actually been saving a lot of the seeds to add to my seed collection because they are something that will um, grow well through the summer and a survival food. So over here I have my Everglades tomato plants. They are still doing absolutely great. All my other tomato plants have died in the heat of the summer, and these have strived through the heat. They're still flowering, they're still setting fruit, whereas all my other tomato plants have not. <clears throat> um, they've gotten diseased and completely died off. These have been a huge winner for the summer, which I have recently added these to my seed collection as well, and I'll be planting them in our fall garden. Around our entire garden area, we do have our blueberry plants that have been doing well. Um, they will be setting flowers here in the next couple months for another harvest in the fall. I think that completes this side of the garden. I'm gonna go over here and show you the death that's happening in our garden. We have, and the weeds are awful. I actually embarrassed to even be out here showing you this garden, but I'd rather be honest because I'm sure there's many others that have a hard time keeping up with anything um, in the summertime. Usually this is all pulled up and just ready to go for fall. Um, all of this right here was my area where I had um, my thousand head kale. I actually tried to stake these off hoping that I could keep these two, see if they would continue to grow. Um, this one has died and has rotted through the middle. This one doesn't look too healthy. I'm going to see if we can keep this guy going. There is all my dead tomato plants. <laughs> and this is actually an Everglades tomato. Um, I think because it was over here in my diseased other tomato plants that were dying, 
Um, some of the bugs that were on these tomato plants kind of jumped over here and um, made this one sick. But I do have a, another Everglades tomato in my container garden in the back um, barn area, which I will show you. I also had some okra through this row, which a lot of them have died off. I've had some nematode issues. I have a few sunflower plants that I am still have out here I've yet to pull because I am saving the seeds for these. This, if you want to go back to some of my previous videos and see some of these beautiful sunflowers, you can do that, but we'll be adding those to the seed collection as well. And again, here are my, these are my southern peas. This variety is uh, black eyed peas. I also have a Texas cream over there. Um, the kids actually like the Texas cream. They're a little sweeter than the black eyed peas. My husband and I like the black eyed peas um, better. And uh, this has been another winter. Over here are loofah plants. I'm going to show you how wild they've gone here in a second. But this is where I had all of my um, pepper plants. And again, I'm so embarrassed because I've let this go the last month. We've been doing a lot of camping and spending time on the water, which are things I'd much rather be doing um, in the heat of summer than really working in, against the heat um, in our garden. <clears throat> but I can tell you, we were able to continue to harvest through the summer with all the things that we had planted. There was at least two or three crops that we were consistently uh, eating off of. So in my loofahs, I actually planted four plants, which you can order on my seed collection as well. But they, oh my gosh, <laughs> I didn't realize this. Can you guys see that? There's a loofah growing all the way up in this tree. So this loofah plant, I'm going to show you this, has gone just ridiculous. It has not only climbed this way, but it is climbing up this tree, which I'm going to end up pulling this down because I don't want it to ruin these trees here. Um, here is also my yard bean plant that grow these beautiful beans. They have been producing all through the summer as well. Um, so I'll continue planting these uh, through fall. But look at these flowers of my loofah plant. And I've got like loofah after loofah after loofah. Just continuing loofahs everywhere. Oh, I've got a random blueberry too. So those have been super fun. Here's one that's almost dried out. It's almost ready to pick to um, let dry. Um, I recently did harvest a small loofah young to just try to cook it in the kitchen and it was very delicious. Oh, look at that butterfly. The bees have just been loving these loofah plants. But look, it. <laughs> Y'all, this is just crazy. If you give loofahs the space and you give them something to climb, they will just climb without even your help. So here are just more loofahs and more and more and whoa. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh my word. And I better get this one down before my husband gets onto me because it's literally about to take over this tree. And it will probably continue to go up that tree to the roof. So, um, but I forgot to mention over in this garden, I will be pulling up some of my eggplants that I have over here. These eggplants have been producing for almost two years now and they've been great. Um, I'm just gonna probably pull up one. I'm gonna see if it will transplant well, um, but just, living off of these four plants have been um, just enough for us. I will be replacing this little strawberry tower with a super cute tower and I'll be doing an unboxing for that. I can't wait to put that into the garden and show you how I'm setting that up. I should have it probably for you in a couple weeks. Um, I also kind of want to do a video on what I am doing to my garden, all the amendments that I'm putting down and maybe a hyperlapse of us pulling everything out and in detail showing you what and how we're doing that for our garden. If that's something you'd be interested in, please comment below. And thank you. <laughs> yeah, you did. 
And your hair, that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, our herbs are doing well. My husband recently have pulled this out of our um, cow area and was concerned with the rust rusting going on with that. So, of course, I told him, well, we're definitely keeping that. We're going to use it as a raised bed. So I'm not quite sure where to put that. If you have any ideas or suggestions where I should put it and what I should put in it, that would be helpful. I always like to hear everybody's uh, input and the design and what you'd like to see grow. So if there is anything that I forgot to mention in this garden as far as what you can plant right now in August, please put that in the description below because I am not perfect and I do not know everything. So um, if you've grown something in the heat of August that I haven't listed, make sure that you put that in the description below. So here is my back barn garden. This is an old water trough that my husband brought home. Someone uh, left it on the property that they were demoing and it's absolutely beautiful. I'm growing Everglades tomatoes in them and they are going crazy wild. Um, I obviously have some really nice soil in this container um, and good compost because look at them, they're just going crazy. Um, we've been harvesting a ton of these, putting them in salads and pastas, and definitely a summer favorite. Whoa, look at that! Whoa! Whoa! Sweet potato! Oh. <laughs> Here, show. Look at that! Oh. Woohoo! Sweet potato! All right, let's put them in our bucket. There's going to be more on the bottom. <laughs> All right. These are our sweet potatoes that we have in our container here. We're gonna see how well this did. Plant these in January. That's a pretty darn long time to wait. All right, we're gonna dump it. Let's see. You ready? Whoa! <laughs> that is so yeah, much easier. Yeah, yeah. So guys, do you, would you rather grow sweet potatoes in a container or in the ground? In a container. Oh yeah.